Hi guys, welcome back to the painting channel and today I want to show you by doing a little bit of planning you can actually save yourself a lot of heartache when it comes to doing the painting. So let's roll the intro and let's see what it's all about. Okay, by doing a little bit of preparation work before you start doing your painting properly, it could save you an awful lot of time, a lot of anguish and disappointment further down the road. Now, we don't ordinarily do enough of this, and I'm just as guilty as the next person. So many times I see something, I go for it, and, you know, afterwards you think, yeah, that was all right, but maybe I could have done it better. But by taking a little bit of trouble ahead of time, you can actually not fall foul of that sort of comment. The thing is that if you do a few thumbnails of something, if you take a picture that's on a, on a, uh, in front of you maybe, or on a photograph, and look at it, do a few thumbnails, a few simple sketches in little squares in a notebook or in a sketchbook, and try and change what you're seeing, or try and change the way that you could present that painting as a whole. So it doesn't have to be exactly as the photograph suggests, or indeed the scene in front of you suggests. What you could do is take elements, move them, bring them up in the screen, as it were, change the dynamic of the picture. By doing a few thumbnails, it really does show you a route through. And at the same time, you're starting to learn about the subject that you intend to paint. By keep drawing it, by doing several little sketches of it, you start to understand the construction of the scene itself. So not only do you create a much better composition, but you've also got a little bit more insight in how that tree is going to be drawn, how that tree will look, how that bush or that house or any other subject may look when you come to paint it. So that's what today is all about. So without further ado, let's dive straight in and let's see how it all turns out. Okay, Rena, what I want to do first and foremost is to have a look at the overall concept, the overall uh, positioning of the cloud and the composition of the painting that I want to create. Now, you don't have to do this at all. It's just me showing you maybe yet another way of pre-testing your thoughts, sort of giving yourself a bit of a chance before you get started, before you go on and create a nice drawing in your on your paper that doesn't actually work out at the end of the day so by doing this by having a little bit of an explore around you get an idea of the design the shape that you want to create uh, as a compositional aspect in the work that you're going to uh, commence so i'm just coming in here and i'm just suggesting a little bit of blue sky and using the negative space to create the a cloud very very faintly through here and the And this time I'm going to put in a slightly higher piece of beach and I can put in the groins through here if I wish to going off to the sea and then we've got the um, bay the lovely sea there are going to be some people in here so this is what I've got to work on now what I like about this whole thing is the this area here of this great big piece of cloud and let's go back the other way on this cloud and let's just look at maybe this portion of the cloud, this portion here. So let's come back in with our beach and our sea once again. Those variables will not change very much. They are all they are, and they're going almost 
are horizontally across the picture plane. But let's just come in here now and let's just put in a bit more information on this. We could actually change the dynamic of the beach. We can actually have that come down at a bit more of an angle like that, which is quite interesting. So let's just take some of the better elements of those images that we've already looked at. Let's put in our C through there. And on one of the pictures you've got a little bit of a headland through there which just adds another piece of information to our image overall. It's not appeared in any of these. And we can bring a nice diagonal aspect to our beach coming down like that. So we've got a lovely lead in up through that up through there and maybe into our picture plane but then we can come back and we can say well that's nice and that's from this one pretty much that's the overall I'm not sure if i like that what i really do like though is the dynamic of this piece of cloud in here Okay, really first things first then the paper it's an ash paper it's a rough surface it's 140 pounds or 300 gsm and it's a 10 by 14 lots of sizes are available but i do quite like this 10 by 14 size overall and more importantly it is in a block which means to say that it is gummed all the way around as you can see from that but there's a little area there that when you finish your painting and it's all completely dry you can slip in a credit card there run it around relieve that uh, sheet off of the pad and start your very next painting it's a great way that the paper will start to move a little bit when you've got a lot of water on it because it is after all only 140 pounds but that said and done once it's dry because it's got the gum all the way around it will dry back very flat and uh then you can have a nice flat piece and then you can take that off and start working on your next painting. The brushes I'm using today uh, are all Rosemary and Company of course as always. These are again pretty much as always the Red Dot series so if you are vegan or vegetarian uh, don't worry these are uh, filaments they are not animal hair so you can buy these with a clear conscience. And if you do go over to Rosemary's site and buy any of her brushes, oil, acrylic or watercolour, please on checkout just put my name in Paul Apps Unbroken Capitals uh, in the affiliate link on checkout and that will help me out a little bit and I would thank you very much for that. I've also got the same uh, mechanical pencil with the 2B lead in it, there's a half millimetre and that I will do some very simple drawing with to start with as I did with the little thumbnails before so what I'm going to do is indicate now I did quite like that angle so I'm going to come across here with just a sort of very faint suggestion of where my horizon line will be that is going to be where the top of the sea is I'm trying to keep it as narrow as I can here but nice and flat through there at the same time and I'm going to come through here with a bit of a diagonal now if you feel confident you don't have to draw this part in by all means, just go in with the paint if you feel happy to do that. I'm just giving you a bit of an idea. Personally, I will probably just go in 
with the clouds and the paint without any drawing. But for those of you who feel that you just want that extra bit of support when it comes to doing and planning your picture in the way that we created the thumbnails, then just come in with a few simple marks that will indicate to you where this picture is going. So I said I've got several rosemary brushes. Now I can use a piece of natural sponge and wet areas up. And I'm going to come in with a bit of a wash over the whole area. Now this water is slightly dirty, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a bit of orange and I'm going to come in with some uh, raw sienna and I've got a weakish mix. I'm going to put a little bit of Indian yellow to that as well. What I want to come in is suggesting a little bit of lovely glow to some of these cloud forms through here. But I'm going to use the same brush, but this time I'm going to use some cobalt blue, but I want to make quite a bit of it. The last thing you want to do, if you can help it, is having to stop halfway through an application of color, only to have to try and remix it quickly, enabling you to uh, continue, because invariably edges will start to dry and won't help you. I'm going to put a little bit of phthalo blue into that mix of cobalt blue just to influence it a bit. Now the color here is much thicker there. There is a lot more pigment to water ratio than I had in that first wash. So what I can do now, I'm hoping, is to start putting in some of this blue uh, a bit. Okay, now I did use a hairdryer on this and it's not totally dry. I still want a little bit of dampness in the paper surface to allow my next layer just to move a little bit within the paper fibers. Okay. So while this is still damp, before I talk it to dryness, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to add in my next warm layer. Now for that, I'm going to be using some more of the raw sienna Primarily a little bit of the orange. That's probably way too much orange. Let's come back over here There's also a bit of yellow in there, but I don't want it to weaken mix I want to come in here and I want to be able to add in some lovely soft warm lights
little bit of the blue, cobalt blue. Uh, you can use other blues, you can use some phthalo blue if you want to. With some ultramarine, that's where I should have gone. And the ultramarine is warming up that blue. Now, I want to tap a little bit of my uh, indigo in there, just to one side, so you can see how we're graying up that blue. And here's the point when you should take an old piece of paper, so you've got an odd piece of old watercolor paper, just test your color, see how you feel that might look. Because what we're mixing up now is a little bit of our cloud. And it's quite bluish at the bottom, so I want to come in here and I want to put that in. Now, I quite like that. And it's going to be subtle enough that it will make its presence felt here. working quite fast. The moisture in here is going to cause a cauliflower if again my water content is just too much for the pigment. So I have deliberately put less water in but knowing that there's enough moisture in this to work with what I've got and to push it around the painting. I'm going to bring some of that colour up into here. some very very subtle colors coming in here little browns little oranges almost semi mixing with those colors underneath and the blues just trying to mix up what we're seeing all right now I actually coming in with a bit more indigo and just going to tuck some of that up under there while we're working down now I'm very much uh, not much water going in. I'm going to put some of the ultramarine violet into this as well. Okay, now we can start looking at maybe adding a little bit more orange into the dirty mark. So we've got uh, a lot of our pigment, but we're going to take a lot of water out. So we don't want too much water, even at this stage. But we do want a lot more information into some of these dark areas in our cloud. Bring some of that up there. going to quickly do is I'm going to come in with a bit of indigo and I just want to suggest not too 
dark. See, that's a little too dark. Let's just come off damp brush again. Just take, pick that pigment up with the brush, move that dark along, and we have our bit of headland there. If it's now here, and maybe too late, I did want to dampen that up. It may still have a little bit of movement in there. Mm, it's gone a bit dry, so I'm going to come across now with some more pigment. I should have done this at the time, and this could be a huge no-no, but I wanted to bring in some colour in here, like that. Now, that could cause me a huge issue. You see how it's already starting to create one? That is me being a little bit silly, and I'm going to have to repair that area, dry it out, like that and come back with pretty much a solid color through there, repairing that issue. And uh, I'm gonna let that dry off a little bit and then come back in. In the meantime though, I'm gonna come across here with my water. I'm gonna come in with some more orange and a bit of that yellow. Have I got this dry enough yet? Well, let's just see. Let's come back in and we don't want too much water. We want to see if we can come down here with some of this pigment through here and just create that subtle sort of shadowiness underneath that cloud. I'm gonna take it all the way through there, all the way down through here. And I'm hoping above everything else that we don't have too many issues. If I do, then there's a lesson for me to have learned. I should have left well alone. Now that's left a bit of a hard edge, but there is quite a hard edge around the cloud. So to assist that, get away with that, it's coming, sorry, with a bit of indigo. Let's just bring that heavier weight into this cloud through here. A little bit more. Okay, enough of, let's crack on. So what I want to do now is come in with some ultramarine violet, a little bit of indigo, and we're going to come in with some beautiful colors of our sea. Because of the cloud, it is going to be warms and cools. Lots of blue if I can get it in there. Lots of lovely blues, but my blue is going to be tainted with all the oranges that are underneath because I already have put in this lovely uh, orange color which will affect all future colors that go on top so there's no getting away from that so i just want to come in with some more blues just bring that dark in there and you see there was a mistake just there look at that wasn't paying attention Right, I've got to dry this off before I carry on. Okay, so I hadn't made enough provision for that paint to be dry above, so let's just quickly wash in this color now. This is our C horizon line. Bring that through, bring that down. A little bit of a wash.
Okay, I think we're dry enough now to carry on. And what I'm going to do is very quickly put in what I think should be the beach. Now I'm going to come in and make it quite warm. It's quite a bit of orange. And I'm going to use quite a bit of indigo, which makes that lovely, luscious, lovely brown colour. As you can see, that lovely warm colour. Quite like what that does, but I want to temper it. So I'm going to cool it down a little bit with some of that blue. It's very distinctly different than that one there. It's not as fiery. I want to come in and I want to put in that darkness almost in one hit if I can. I don't even mind if the lovely rough paper creates a few jumps and skips. just put in a suggestion of a couple of people as the photograph suggests and they're not too tall although they're taller than you actually think and put them in about here a little bit more water now if you want to use a um, smaller brush a little round brush will do the job quite nicely I'm just staying with a rigger I've uh, got a bit more water involved now, a little bit more of a mix. But tack carefully because you can't undo what you do here. If you get this wrong, then you've got to live with it. So let's just put in a figure as one. Give it a little bit more depth there into his body. Okay, and his friend, who's maybe a little shorter than he is, not much in it really. Standing next to him, they're having a chat about what's going on why they haven't caught any fish maybe a couple of little fish bags next to them and they're equipped I think we've done enough. What I will just quickly do is come back with a small round. This one is the um, number five. I'm going to come in with a bit more blue into that mix. Let's cool it down a little bit. I don't want it so aggressively dark. And I'm going to pretty much do the same thing as I did just now. Put a bit of pigment down and just run it across. This is my headland. We've got our sea. We've got our fisherman, we've got our sea, and hopefully we've got our dramatic cloud. Now this painting, like many of my paintings, hasn't gone without incident. There is an issue here. I think we've got away with it quite well, to be fair. And I had a few issues in other places, but overall I'm not unhappy. Now, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to make mistakes. And the trick is knowing not to panic and try and work your way out of them before you just throw the whole thing in the bin and try and start again. Often there is a way through it and hopefully this has shown you that near disaster wasn't a disaster. Could have been better but it wasn't that bad. Here for instance I forgot or didn't realize how good this paper is because it holds on to moisture so much longer and there's still moisture in here enough to pull that pigment in now I deleted it by getting a little clean rag on there and I've got that little line of, of sort of negligible colour. I quite like that to be fair. I'm not unhappy with it. So I'm going to leave it as is. I've got my horizon line back in. I've got my C there. I think the whole thing works as a painting and hopefully you've enjoyed this process and hopefully you'll have a go at it. So I'll catch each and every one of you in the next one. Take care. Have fun with your painting. All the best. Bye bye. 
Okay, everybody, I do hope you enjoyed that. I had a whole heap of fun doing that painting. And I've got to say, as you're well aware, that like many of my other paintings, it didn't go without incident. Now, the trick to that is, is not losing your head, keeping your core, and understanding how you can, with a little bit of care, work your way out of trouble and continue. Now, this painting did come close to not continuing, but it worked its way through. We kept a cool head, as I said, and I think we won at the end of the day. Now, uh, the whole thrust of this painting was to show you that by taking a few ideas, preliminary sketches, and a few thumbnails before you go on into your painting will save an awful lot of trouble and time when it comes to getting the right composition for the piece that you intend to do. So with that in mind, I think it worked very, very well. And I think you've got something from it to move on with. So if you've enjoyed this and you're still with me, then why not give it a thumbs up? And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help it grow and helps it reach a lot more people around the world who, like you, are trying to learn to paint. And the reference for this, as always, will be over on my Patreon for you to download. You do not need to be a patron to download it. It's free. It's for you to do. And if you do a painting from it, then put it up on the Painting with Paul Apps page over on Facebook. Look for that. Ask to join, you'll be welcomed in, and you can air the pictures that you create from my videos there. It'd be lovely to see that and lovely to interact with you guys there. And it just remains for me to say that while you're over on Patreon, why not check out? There is so much on offer. 200 plus, I think it is now, videos fully narrated and uh, full length for you to enjoy and get something from. There is even an oil painting tier if you like a bit of oils as well. So with all that said and done, I'm now going to get ready for my next video. I wish each and every one of you all the very best in the new year to come, which is hot on the hills of this video by all accounts. We're not far off it. So enjoy your New Year's celebrations. I catch each and every one of you in the next video in 2023. Take care, everybody. Enjoyed your company. All the best. Bye-bye.